My name is Kainton, the Tech Pro, and in this tutorial, we are going to now continue from where we stopped. You already know how to create this login page. So in the previous tutorial, we created uh, this login page automatically by adding this annotation to the form.xml. This annotation is Spring Boot Data Security. Simply add this annotation to .xml, uh, form.xml and then run the app. If you run the app, then uh, you have in your console, you can see a password uh, that has been provided, right? So if you use this password, you'll be able to log in using the default username of the user. So I'll sign in and you can see we're able to sign in. Now, all this procedure is available for you in the description box. You'll see a link to this place right from creating the initial application and unsecured web application to add in default Spring uh, Security Authentication, uh, all the way to everything we are going to do is actually here. So if you are missing out something, please uh, do it. And also how to use Timelift to be able to create an access HTML page or HTML file, because what you are seeing here is an HTML file that we actually created. If I actually go back to the view source, you can see it's a very simple HTML uh, page. And if I go to my Spring Boot, uh, my my uh, STS, you can see this HTML page. All right, uh, so let's now see how we can use our own username and password instead of using this auto-generated username and password. Before I continue, I'd like to remind you to su subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed, so that you get notified when I make new lessons. Well, to create, uh, configure new username and password, we need to use a configuration file. A configuration file is simply one more class you can add. However, this class we are going to add will be a special class. It is going to be a class that extends uh, Web Security Configurer Adapter. So let's create a new class first. So this is our class will be a configuration. We'll use it to store the configuration of handling the you know, new users and passwords. So let's call. Let me call it my. Let me call it application security config so that's what I want to call this file you can call it anything and uh, so basically I'll just say finish also yeah so this so one thing we are going to do again you have the procedure here for you in case you miss out something this is what you can follow so this is what we are trying to do now, extend the web configurer. So the first thing we need to do is to make this class extend web security configurer adapter. So what I'm going to do now is to, is to uh, restore this so that we can have the window open side by side so that we'll be able to follow it without missing out anything at all. So permit me to just reduce the font of this a bit. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to drag this a bit downward. So we are going to extend, extend, just after creating this file, you can actually give it any name. It must not be app security config, you can give it any name. But I just want to give a meaningful name. So extends is going to extend web security configurer adapter. Web security configurer adapter. I think I got it correctly. All right, so this web security configurer adapter is available in a package. Uh, let's see, call the uh, web security. Yeah, so we can see web security configure adapter. Am I missing out anything? Web security configure adapter. All right, so it's available in this package called uh, of the Spring Framework of Security and you can get it there. The next thing you want to do is to add an annotation to this class because it's a configuration uh, file. So we are just going to add an annotation configuration. Also, add another annotation that says enable web security. All right, so at this point, we have done close to half of the job. The next step says write a method that overrides user details steady. So I can actually go ahead to write the method that overrides uh, user details steady. So instead of doing that, I can just right click and go to source and go to override or implement methods. And I can see different uh, methods available for me for free. So what we want to override is user details steady. So I'm going to 
just selecting. I'm going to take out all this trash. The reason we extended web security, security configure adapter is so that we can have features for usernames uh, for authentication and authorization in a web application. I'm going to make this a bean so that it will be a spring bean and it can be reused any other time. All right, so this uh, user detail service is a detail service, so it's going to return list of usernames and passwords for us. So where do where does it get these usernames and passwords? Well, uh, we are going to create new users at this point and give those users usernames and passwords, and this is our own usernames and password. All right, to do that, first I want to store these usernames and passwords or list of users in an array. So in the web security configure uh, configure our data, the user details are not called users or user, but they are user details objects. So user details. This is the object we are going to create. So it's called user details, not users. Uh, let me store them in an in a list called users, and it's going to be new array list. Okay, so this is fine. So now we have created a list of users, and this is an a list of user details, and it's an empty list at the moment. So how do we populate it? How do we create new users at this point? Well, you can see that we can create user using a method that has been provided. So I can just say uh, user details, let's say user details, let's call it u1, let's create one user detail called u1 equals, so what we are going to say is user dots, if you say dots then it's going to give you an intelligence, so you have user with default password encoder, so more like you don't actually need to store password as plain text. You need to encode it in some way. So you say dot username, and now you are going to specify the username. Let's say Kainson, and then you say dot, and then password. Password. Let's say root. Uh, we can actually also specify the role of this user because Spring Security provides both authentication and authorization. So I'm going to say dot role dot role. Uh, I think I'm getting it right. Dot roles good. Uh, and the roles is going to be just one single role. Uh, is going to be user. So it could be user, it could be admin, it could be super user, and stuff like that. And finally, I'm going to say dot build. So this is how to create a new user. So let me just drag this a bit so that you'll be able to see the complete line of code you've written. All right, so we've written this. The next thing we want to do uh, is to now I want to add this, okay, maybe I'll just create one more or two more, just copy it and paste and change the usernames and password there. So just copy it and paste, paste again. So I want to create three users, U2 and U3. So the second user will be Jaden. Uh, the third user is Solace, Solace and I'm going to make the second password to be pass, and the third password is actually is also going to be pass. All right. So I created three users, and I want to add these three users to list of users. You have here. I have here a list of users. I want to add the three users to it. So I can say users dot add uh, u1. Okay. So. And do the same thing for the second one. Users that add uh, this intelligence sometimes gives me headache. U2, and then users that add U3. All right, so we've created a list of array list of user details, and we also have um, uh, populated them, populated it with users. However, what do we uh, return? These users are not stored in database, they are stored in the memory. 
So we are going to return an object of in memory user details. That is the syntax for it. In memory user details, in memory user details manager, and we give it the list of users we've created as an array list. Alright, so this is how it goes. So this in memory user details manager comes from let me see in memory user details manager. Uh, okay, so return okay is going to be new. Alright, so it comes from where? It comes from here security provisioning. So I'm going to save everything. So I don't know, <laughs> will it work? Uh, no, I don't know. So we are going to try it out. So I'm going to save everything. Um, let's see, hope everything is fine. Okay, so let me just relaunch this application and we are going to try this users we created here. So let me just relaunch it. So if it works, then we've completed the second part and then we are now going to worry about uh, uh, storing user details in a database. So you can see at this point it's starting up. Okay, everything started successfully. Uh, okay, so the, as you can see in the console, there is no uh, default password provided for us like before. All right, so let's go test it out now to see uh, what we have. Okay, so if I refresh this page, you can see it now comes to ask username and password. If I type in something else and uh, let's try something else that is not correct, sign in, it doesn't work. So let me try kind son. The first one, kind son. Uh, and then let's try uh, root. Yeah, root is the password, R O, -O T, sign in. And you can see it worked perfectly. Uh, so this is the basics. Uh, we are moving on. I just want to help you to see that it's quite easy. I'm going to stop here. I would like to remind you to subscribe. Subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. Also like my video if you have any challenges. Leave it in the comment box below and I'm going to get back to you. So go, moving on to the next steps. As you can see, uh, you can always visit the website. Uh, you can see all the steps. So this is what we've just did. So next steps, we are going to talk about storing this data in the database and feel free to also uh, watch the video explanation. So we see in the next lesson, I'd like to thank you for viewing.